I payload successfully launched into orbit, and tonight Yasset rides in the upper position on the Ariane 5 ECA. Yes, and we can say that Ariane 5 is the best solution to launch two satellites into GTO like we are doing tonight. The ECA is the most powerful version of the Ariane 5. It is more than 50 meters tall. It is one impressive rocket. And then we discover a description of the launcher, the two boosters with a height of 31.6 meters and a mass of 278 tons. Then in the middle, the main cryogenic stage or EPC with an height of 31 meters and a mass of 188 tons with the Vulcan 2 engine. And on top of it, the cryogenic upper stage with a height of 4.7 meters and a mass of 19 tons, and on top of this, Ariane 5 ECA, the fairing, with a height of 17 meters and a mass of 2.6 tons. So the two satellites are hidden in, uh, inside this fairing. And a little less than four minutes to go, and again, everything remains green. Intelsat New Dawn rides in the lower position, are the SILDA. It's the first private sector communication satellite for Africa. Yes, and we now discover some officials from Intelsat New Dawn and Orbital Sciences Corporation, which manufacture the satellites. And both Intelsat and Orbital Sciences, they know Koru very well. Intelsat has entrusted 51 of their satellites to Ariane Space since 1985, and uh, I know that the dignitaries from around the world are watching closely at special Intelsat receptions. Uh, my friend Diane Van Beaver is down in Johannesburg, South Africa for one right now, and of course in Washington, D.C. they're having a very big one uh, with uh, Intelsat and Ariane Space. And you see this image of the upper part hidden under the fairing of the Ariane 5, and we will discover what is in fact hidden under this fairing so you can see it on the image and you discover Yasat 1A uh, which is the upper satellite tonight Yasat 1A is for Alia Satellite Communications Company so it's a telecommunication satellite with a global mass close to 6 tons tonight and then it is on top of this structure called the SILDA, and inside of the SILDA we discover the Intelsat New Dawn satellite, and it's for, of course, Intelsat Telecommunications, 3,000 kilos, and it goes at 32.8 degrees east uh, this evening. We're closing in on the two-minute mark. We see the Ariane 5 uh, fairing out there. It carries the signature of South Africa's Nelson Mandela as a special tribute to the Intelsat New Dawn satellite. Beautiful night here in French Guiana. We did have some rain earlier in the week, but boy, Mother Nature is with us tonight. And, now and we see, we see those, those two, two arms. arms. That's what I was going to ask you about. Are they holding that rocket up? No, in fact, it's only the gravity which is holding the 780-ton Ariane 5 upright. And these two arms are used to support the fuel lines which are topping off the liquid propellants. We continue to top off the cryogenic fuel until just before launch. It is extremely cold, and obviously it is very, very hot here in Kourou. So the fuel boils off, and we have to keep the tanks full until the launch. Yep, and we're closing in on the one-minute mark before launch. And we have a large number of VIPs here at Jupiter, and they will be heading out to the balconies to witness the launch from outside. And if you don't mind, Harry, I think I will going out too to see it. H0, one minute. You can go as long as you take my camera to get some uh, movies of the launch. And there he goes, where we uh, welcome everybody around the world, viewing the live webcast of the 201st Ariane Mission on arianespace.com. Special greetings again to our friends in Johannesburg, South Africa, the Intelsat headquarters in Washington, D.C., in Paris, in Abu Dhabi, Green Bay, Wisconsin, all around the world. And uh, at this time, Arian Space would also like to take a moment to extend our thoughts and prayers to all of our customers in Japan who are dealing with the natural disaster. Okay, we're down to it. The famous countdown to the launch. And tonight, Yasat 1A and Intelsat New Dawn, here it comes. A tous de l'EDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage 
match Bulka. Okay, so we are waiting for information from the control center. So from where I was, I could not see anything because I can only see it from a very, very far away. So we are waiting for information right now. We are coming to you from Corvo, French Guiana, and we are again waiting some additional information. On the broadcast this evening of Intelsat, New Dawn, and Yasat 1A. We should have an announcement shortly. So everyone here at Jupiter is waiting for information, and I can see... Jean Jean-Yves Legal, Chairman and CEO of Ariane Espace, we will certainly make an announcement really shortly. One thing that uh, we could say that, uh, again, what we do know is that uh, the Ariane 5 has to come up to a certain level of thrust before the boosters themselves will fire, and those did not fire, which means exactly. that the Ariane 5 is still on the ground and is, uh, is not uh, off the ground. It has stayed on the pad uh, this evening. And presumably that means, uh, again, uh, we will hear some announcements shortly. Yeah, because status. as we said, the 780 tons of Ariane 5 is upright, just thanks to its, the gravity. So it's like, you know, just like there, like that on the ground. And we will again hear an announcement shortly. Uh, Johnny Blagal and uh, other authorities here at uh, the... Uh, Jupiter facility, and uh, as you see in the video, uh, they uh, are here in the fishbowl. A uh, number of them, again, are consulting, I would assume at this point, with the CDL-3 and with other uh, officials uh, regarding uh, the status of the launcher and all of the vehicles. Yeah, they are certainly controlling everything on the launch vehicle and on the... On, uh, on the ground facility at the CDL-3, I think every engineer there are really busy right now to, to find out what has just happening. And that's why we are expecting for information. And I can see Jean-Yves Le Gall uh, in front of its mi microphone, so I think we will hear and very shortly. Here we, here we go, response. down to Jean-Yves Le Gall. Donc, uh, Right, I'd allow uh, everybody to put their headsets on. As you have seen, the synchronized uh, sequence went uh, to the end and the cryogenic engine started as planned. But as you know, for seven seconds, the launcher carries out tests, and if the tests are not conclusive, uh, the solid boosters uh, do not go ahead. These tests were not conclusive, and therefore uh, we have an aborted uh, launch. The cryogenic uh, engines have uh, switched off. We now have to test and see uh, what actually took place and why this launch abort took place and lift off as quickly as possible, as soon as possible. We have to bring the launcher back um, to uh, the BAF, and therefore this will be delayed, obviously. 
I am very sorry about this, uh, but as you know, we do not take any risks, uh, and therefore uh, it is very important uh, for us uh, to check this. Uh, I will give you some further information in the next few hours on why and what the causes for this were. Thank you. And again, uh, you just heard from Johnny Legal. Uh, as he mentioned, uh, there will be further information coming shortly. Uh, but we can tell you that uh, we see the uh, rocket, uh, the Ariane 5, on the pad. And uh, every indication is that the payloads are safe and fine. And the system worked. That's the important thing to understand, exactly. is that the safety parameters are in place to ensure that that engine uh, gets up to full thrust before the boosters fire off. So it's the aim of this video transmission and we will give you, okay.